He says that we still need to debate the science. I say get over it. Okay? Our security is at stake. Our financial, I mean, go to the gas pump and ask why that gas price is as high as it is. Who's making money off us? It's time we kept that money in America and kept that money in Washington State. So while he blames me for the high price of gas and he blames me for the high price of food, he blames me for about anything and everything he can blame me for, the fact of the matter is he's got no plan whatsoever to do anything about any of it. None. It's all a tax. It's no plan to do anything. And you know what? Leadership is not about a tax. Leadership is about getting out, getting things done. And we have taken on the tough challenges, and we have delivered to the people of the state of Washington. That's the kind of steady leadership we need in these tumultuous times. Now, transportation, let's talk about this for just a moment, okay? Uh, first he voted for a gas tax, then he remained silent. Said he didn't want to get involved in politics. <laughs> didn't want to participate, despite the fact he's a voter. Right? The voters said yes to the gas tax. He says nothing's been done. Can he not see? Can, is he not driving on the roads where we have all those construction sites? I mean, what's up with that? Let me tell you what happened. Legislature saw that in 2004, we had completed a grand total of a dozen, a dozen highway transportation projects. They got disgusted and they said, you know what? It's time for a change. We're going to have that department report to the governor. We want to see changes. And so it came to the governor in July of 2005. Now what's happened since July of 2005? 165 highway projects have been completed. We are now in construction with another 66. In the next six months, we'll add another 40. And my friends, these aren't stop signs. These are things like the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And if you take a look at that, that cut down commute by an hour and it has reduced the accidents by 60% and no fatalities. So I'll put my record up his any day of the weekend. <laughs> and oh, by the way, he talks about his plan. I think Mark may have mentioned something about his plan. Let's talk about that plan for just a brief moment. It's all, every project he talks about is based on 2007 cost estimates. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we all were paying gas prices from 2007? What, does he live in fantasy land, or what's up with that? Where, where are our cost estimates legitimately from the day of construction with an inflation till the end of the construction? Number two, he's going to build a eight-lane bridge of 520. It will land nowhere. It will land nowhere, trust me. We worked as hard as we could this last legislative session to make sure that we get going to replace that bridge because it's a hazard. Six lanes, one set of pontoons. That was the agreed upon choice. And let me be clear, if we did anything more than that, the west side with more lawyers per capita in that area will make sure it doesn't happen. He comes along and says eight lanes and I'll build it for a billion dollars less. Oh, really? Now, how might you do that? And here's in part how he's going to do it. He's going to steal money from sound transit, yeah. illegal, okay? So good luck to you. And number two, take $800 million out of the general fund. So he's going to pave roads on the backs of kids' education and kids' health care and community safety. That's why a University of Washington professor referred to his so-called transportation plan as a fairy tale. And it is. So I ask you, as we look about what's happening, are we going to get the truth out? Now, some of you will say, well, they come up with a negative attack ad that's wrong. You should get up and say, well, it's wrong. Well, you know, then you have voters who go, well, they say one thing, then she says another. I don't know what to believe. That's why I'm here. You are the voice. You, if you can talk to people because you know will be able to tell them the truth. And that's much more persuasive than any 30-second ad that says, meaner, neener, he's lying to you, okay? And I do want to take one issue on up close and personal right now because I'm so offended by it, just to show you the extreme to which he and his friends will go.
this issue of Indian gaming. So let's take this up. $140 million, I have no idea where that number came from. None. None whatsoever. Had we signed a deal with the Spokane's that said that, you know how much money the state would be getting today? Not one penny. Not one penny. It wasn't realistic. How was the only way the state might get some money is if we allowed unregulated, off-reservation, in other words, in every one of your neighborhoods, Indian gaming. I said no to that. But you know what? The voters said no to that in a, a ballot initiative in 2004. So the choice was a hypothetical dollar and gaming literally in every neighbor across, neighborhood across the state, or no, we're going to continue to regulate, we're going to continue to maintain it on only on reservation, and that's what we're going to do, and we're not going to buy into the state being a partner in gambling. Now, tell me that is a far cry different than what you're seeing on those ads. Those are blatant lies. So we need to get the facts out, we need to get the truth out, and that's why I'm here this morning to ask for your help to do it. We need to knock on every door, make